Hi, it's Paul again. I wanted to bring you up to date on my fountain pen projects. I had a bit of a setback on the project that I've been working on since my first video, but the good news is that setback has a couple of uh, silver linings to that cloud. One, the uh, pen is going to end up being a source of many spare parts, a organ donor that I can use to increase the lives of many future fountain pens down the road. And the other good news is that now that I'm about to undertake another project, I can chronicle the restoration of a fountain pen from beginning to end in video. So this is the first video that will introduce the pen that is going to be my next project and take you through the initial steps of the disassembly and the beginning of the cleaning. So let's get going. Well, I've had to abandon the project that I was working on because of a fatal flaw. This is something that can happen to old pens on occasion. You'll see that the barrel has a split in it. Basically what probably happened was the material of the barrel shrank after I took the uh, section out and when I tried to put the section back in, the barrel had already shrunk and the plastic cracked. Despite trying to fix it with various types of glue, I haven't been able to get it back together again. So unfortunately, that's probably a write-off. Fortunately, I do have another project in the wings that I can work on. It's this pen, beautiful little pen. It's a Majestic, which is a manufacturer about which people don't really know much. They were available for sale through Sears catalogs, along with an, a few other types of pens, but no one seems to know much about them. As you can see, the cap band it has a nice, unique repeating pattern to it. The clip appears to be attached well and is in good condition. And overall, the pen um, is intact with very little, little exterior damage, if any, just normal wear and tear. It is a lever filler, as you can see. The lever doesn't work because the pen sack inside is dried up and um, solid at this point. So that's going to have to come out. That'll probably be step number one. The pen's nib is in great shape. It's intact, it has its iridium tip, and all the components are there. It obviously could use a little bit of cleaning, but that's not a problem. You'll see that the section is translucent. This was a feature of many older fountain pens that allowed you to see the quantity of ink when this was filled with ink that would be solid the color of the ink and then as the ink went out you would see gradually the window appear uh, as the ink descended it, obviously this section has a lot of dried ink in it which hopefully will come out just fine in a cleaning it'll be interesting to compare this to what it looks like when i'm done The nib is the original nib. It's the Majestic Iridium Tip. So let's see what happens when I disassemble the pen. I need to remove the section first and, re and get so that I can get the sack out. First, I take a typical pot holder, a lid opener, and my section removal tool, my official section removal tools, which is actually a spark plug remover, but we fountain pen people call them section removers. Carefully, a little bit of twisting, and it's coming out. And you can see, wow, 
That used to be a pen sack, an ink sack. That used to be soft rubber. What you're seeing there is the end of the bar that moves to compress the ink sac when the lever is pulled. Basically operating this lever causes that bar to compress which squeezes the sac and, draw, and allows the ink to dr be drawn in. I've cleaned up my desk a little bit and now it's time to look at the section. As you saw earlier, the nib and the feed are attached. This here, all of this is dried rubber sack. It's held in place using shellac, ordinary shellac that you use on a table or, or other uh, surfaces. It's typically easiest to remove this by heating it up using a hairdryer and then scraping it off very, very carefully until there's nothing left. I'll get to that later in the cleaning process. Next, I'm going to try to remove the inner cap from the cap. A lot of people don't realize that inside of a fountain pen cap, there is a second cap. It's called an inner cap. You can see the bottom of it there. I may end up deciding to leave the inner cap in as it appears to be really well attached. Typically what you'll find in a fountain pen caps often is um, the end of the cap will have a, a separate piece called a jewel and the jewel may be screwed in and removing the jewel will expose a hole that you can tap the inner cap out but as you can see on this particular pen the there is no such there's no such jewel the cap is a solid shape so because of that I and because the interior of the of the cap looks in pretty good shape overall what I may end up doing is leaving the inner cap in and just cleaning it very carefully with a minimum amount of water to get any residual ink out but other than that I probably will leave it as is at least for now in order to get the nib and the feed out of the section it typically requires a good soaking the um, the secret ingredient is water mixed with a percentage of ammonia and dish soap, common dish soap. The water, of course, is to soften the ink, which is water-based. Typical fountain pen ink is water-based, so that's good. It, it, all you typically need to get it going is um, just a little bit of water. The ammonia and the dish soap serve as degreasers which if there's any kind of um, material in there that requires degreasing, it, it helps lubricate it. Basically, all I have to do is submerge it in. And of course, any little bubbles it might have come out. And as you can already see, the ink is starting to melt already. That's quite impressive. Look at that. That's a really good sign. That's a very, it's also a pretty nice looking ink. I wonder what it was originally. Unfortunately, that's one of the things you, you can't tell with uh, fountain pens. You get, um, the ink is, is historical and it's probably been in there for 50, 60 years and I'll never know what it is, but eventually it starts coming out like, uh, like a squid. 
Typically I let it soak overnight to make sure that it gets as much out. But as you, I don't know if you can see, but already the clear part of the section is actually bigger than I thought. The, the ink is already coming out of that. Let me show you. Compare this to what you saw a little while ago. Remember this was clear with a little bit of ink in it. Now it turns out all of this is clear as well. You wouldn't have known that from looking at it before, but all of this is clear. Basically the entire feed is clear and this is paint to cover it up. So it's molded in a clear plastic and then painted. This of course is the uh, remains of the sack which is shellacked onto the, onto the uh, section. It's already beginning to get softened, but I'm going to let it soak and then apply some heat. And between the two of those, the, uh, the rest of that debris should come off. Well, I've let the, the section soak for a little while and I'm going to see if I can possibly remove the nib and feed now that it's had a chance to soak. And it's already coming out. And there you have it. Now there's a lot of additional ink still on there. As you can see, that's pretty attached. So that's going back in. And let's see if I can remove the nib from this feed. Yes, and that's going to need a good cleaning. And that's what's called the feed. And that's the guts of a fountain pen. That's what allows the ink to flow from the sack to the nib. And we're gonna let that soak very well too. And here's another look at the feed, um, a little more up close after an initial soaking so that you can get a sense of what the feed looks like. It's basically a piece of plastic or sometimes hard rubber. And what you end up with is this little channel up top is what the ink flows down through and then through the action, through capillary action of the nib that sits on top, then flows out to the ink. These tines are holding, they're very basic ways of holding the ink. The ink will flow and it will store here so that there's always a ready supply. It'll come over the channel and into this, into these tines where it'll, it'll sit and be available when the pen is ready to be used. It's a way of, of having the ink ready to go when you draw on it. Um, typically, as you can see, there's a little bit of cruft there, and that is usually most easily taken care of by just the gentle scrubbing with a toothbrush. Now let's take a look at the nib. After a little bit of soaking, as you can see, there's still a lot of tarnish here on the nib, both on the outside and on the inside. That's going to take some scrubbing to clean off. As it is, the nib is in is is going to be reusable. It's just a matter of getting that tarnish off through careful polishing, which I will do later on in the cleaning process. In the meantime, it's going to continue soaking to try and get as much of that off as possible. Now, while the section the nib and the feed are soaking, I'm going to try and remove what's called the J-bar from the inside of the barrel. It's the device that when you operate the lever, pushes the sack down to suck in the ink. Now this one actually has already started to come out. It needs just a little prompting to completely come out. And there it is. And as you can see from the shape, why they call it a J-bar. 
Now, at first glance, obviously it's very tarnished and it's going to need a good soaking and polishing to come back to at least a basic level of cleanliness. It doesn't affect its functionality, whether it's dirty or not, but if, this is, if there is any rust here, we want to try and arrest any kind of corrosion that could damage the bar later on down the road. So we're going to soak it as well and then give it a very, very thorough cleaning and polishing. And we're back after letting the section, the nib and the feed soak overnight. And we have some interesting results to report. First of all is the nib is, as you can see, still fairly tarnished but it is cleaner than it was. It's going to require some polishing to remove a lot of that tarnish and any lingering cruft. It's probably never going to be perfectly shiny again, but it looks like it's going to write. So I'm looking forward to getting it as clean as we can. Next up, we did have a little bit of a setback with the, um, the J-Bar. As you can see, it came out fairly better, uh, a lot less stuff. It was uh, most of most of what it, it was wearing ended up on this paper towel. But uh, unfortunately, what did happen is that it broke, which is not uncommon for um, old metal. I would show it to you, but it's very hard to grab with these. Um, that little piece did snap off. The metal is old and it was brittle. So unfortunately that J-bar is going to have to be discarded even though it was coming fairly clean. The good news is I have another J-bar, a brand new one that I bought from the UK actually. It's brand new and I bought it for a project where it turned out to be too big. So um, I'm ordering a smaller J-Bar for that project, but this one will work just fine. This gives you a good example of how J-Bars work. The lever on the outside of the pen will push this down, and that flat bar squeezes the sack, drawing the ink in when you release it like that. So I have a J-Bar, and I test-fitted it in here, which I'm not going to do now because it's somewhat of a tight fit, and I don't want to excessively scratch the inside, but it does fit and it'll work just fine. So I'm very happy about that. And the feed came out very nice and clean. As you can see, it's a lot shinier than the last time we saw it. I'm still going to give it uh, some polishing and some more fine abrasion with the toothbrush, but the, uh, the feed is, is all set. The exciting news is the section, which is going to come out right about now. I was very pleased when I took it out of the container to find that the material, sack material, has become very, very soft, gelatinous, gooey, and it's going to come right off. I may not even need to apply any heat. Not sure if you can see it all that well, but it's very liquidy. So what I'm gonna do is rather than trust it to those clamps, I'm gonna hold onto it myself and very carefully doing some scraping. You can see that it's by and large coming off quite gently. It's rather hard to do with the camera in between me and the tool. Normally I would have my visor on and I would be, I would have this thing about an inch away from my nose. You get very nice and intimate with these things. It's something that they actually don't, you don't expect until you start working on these is that working with these materials so close to your face, you also develop, you also get the sense of smell of what these products smell like. Old plastic, old metal. You can smell the rust. You can smell the rubber. 
And as you can see, that's coming off just fine. I'm going to obviously do a lot more on it and a little bit of heat might help take care of some of those more stubborn parts that are still glued on there. But I'm really, really pleased with how quickly it's coming off right now. So that's where we are after a day's soaking. And the next step will be to actually start doing polishing and sanding of the various components to get them even cleaner and to start putting some shine on them. And that's where we are at day two. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing that project get started. It was a lot of fun filming it as it was happening because there was that wonderful sense of suspense that you don't know what's coming next. Future videos will chronicle the rest of the restoration step by step. So I hope you'll stay tuned and join me for those. And in the meantime, we'll see you in cyberspace.